Uh, good afternoon, I'm Juan Oliveris. My name's Kenyel Sakolo. I'm Dom Quintrin, and we're all senior biomedical engineers studying at San Jose State University. Uh, and today we're going to be presenting our project, which is looking at the mechanical performance of biofibers in comparison to carbon fiber composites uh, used in prosthetic performance. Uh, so just a quick overview of what we're going to go over today is we're going to start with our biomedical motivation um, and go into the objectives after we've gathered, gathered all this information, um, go into a little bit of a background, um, actually dive into our experiment, uh, discuss our results, give a little analysis, and then uh, give our acknowledgments. Uh, so a little bit of our motivation is uh, our advisor, Dr. Chang, pointed us towards this paper, uh, which found in 2008, there is uh, one in 100, 190 Americans that suffer from a lost limb related to diabetes. The same paper projects that in 2050, uh, that ratio can go up to one in uh, 80. So um, since these Americans uh, who are diagnosed with diabetes are more likely to uh, have an amputation, the need for um, prostheses and cheaper alternatives and prostheses is going to be needed. Um, right now, there's a, a paper that uh, cited that um, in 2015, the OMP market, orthotics and prosthetics market, is about 1.62 billion U.S. dollars. So there's, it's a very wide um, industry. So there's there's still room to grow. You can get a piece of the market, you know, especially if there are cheaper alternatives. Um, and another thing we found is that the the people suffer, the population suffering from diabetes, are uh, more likely to be historically disenfranchised, meaning they have less financial resources. Um, and then on a global scale. Uh, there are obviously a lot of countries not as wealthy as the U.S., so they'll need cheaper alternatives for um, prosthetic materials. And then lastly, uh, coming from our industry advisor, he said he wanted this project to kind of lay the groundwork for a database on O&P materials, um, and then hopefully can grow from there, depending on what uh, is, is going on in the industry. Um, so the objectives of this project essentially are to compare the mechanical performance of uh, biofibers, which we have our uh, coir and flax, um, and then also comparing that to carbon fiber, which is the gold standard material of uh, prosthetics. Uh, we'll be doing that with single layer um, biofibers, and then we'll be testing it with multi-layer biofibers, uh, which are suitable to be multi-layered. Um, next, we're going to be determining if nylon is go actually going to improve the performance of these materials, and then lastly, it's to, again, begin the, the groundwork for a larger open source database. So a little bit of background on the materials we're going to be using. Uh, the first material we looked at is coir, which is essentially just coconut hair. Uh, there's a large excess of coconut hair, so much so that uh, we found that two thirds of it is wasted. Um, the properties of coconut hair vary depending on the age of the husk. Uh, older husks will be drier, more coarse, thicker, while um, younger husks will be greener, more uh, elastic, um, have more moisture in them. But for this uh, project, we focused on dry husks, uh, older husks. Next, we looked at flax, which is from Ikoa, and that is a long biofiber, which means it could be woven, um, similar to carbon fiber, which is why we chose it, because it could go, undergo the same manufacturing process um, that is standard for sockets in prosthetics, which is uh, lamination. And lastly, there's carbon fiber, again, the gold standard of uh, the prosthetic industry. Nylon is going to be an additive for the two uh, woven fibers, which is uh, flax and coir, and or, uh, carbon fiber and flax. And again, we're going to see if that'll uh, affect the performance. Uh, when it came to quality considerations and applications, uh, we want to keep it at standard, so we looked at uh, ASTM D790 for the three-point flexure test and uh, D638, which is a tensile test for composites. Uh, we also briefly looked over ISO uh, what is that? 1032.8, which is for lower uh, limb prosthetic testing. Uh, and then in terms of applications, since it's a material alternative, we could you could kind of use it in, in any prosthetic socket that is currently using uh, carbon fiber. And again, like as this database grows, we can, people in the industry can kind of piece together uh, which uh, material could be used for whichever purpose they want. Um, here's our simplified design of experiment. So since we have all these materials lined up and we know which tests we want to start with, uh, we have our short fiber uh, coir, which is going to be manufactured through our mimicked injection molding process. Uh, we have single layer flax, which is undergoing the lamination process. We have double layer flax, which is essentially uh, two flax layers with nylon in between as an additive, and then single layer carbon fiber, and then double layer carbon fiber with uh, nylon as an additive. And we're going to do five samples of each.
For the materials that we used, we used core fiber that we bought from uh, Coco Technologies from the Philippines, uh, the woven flax fiber from Rockwest Composites, and the woven carbon fiber we, we got from Hanger Clinic, the nylons also, also from Hanger, it's always the acrylic. The equipments that we use is the aluminum mold that was um, fabricated downstairs in the, in the shop downstairs, and the, the vacuum uh, Quinn that found, and the instrument that's in uh, room 105, the mandrel that we used for the molds that we're going to use for our um, lamination samples was from Hanger and the Dremel to cut them as Warren and I purchased. Uh, there's two uh, fabrication methods. One's the short fiber method, just to mimic the, um, the injection. injection molding that's being used. Um, we use the coir for this uh, method since uh, we're only uh, the coir is not woven and the um, it needs to be cut by two centimeters lengthwise or smaller, and then we did a layer of uh, resin, and then a layer of co uh, coir, layer of resin until our molds filled, and then we covered it, put it in the vacuum, and um, to get rid of as much air bubbles as possible. And as soon as we removed the samples, we did a post process to uh, make sure that all the edges are uh, trimmed. And our next process is the lamination, which is the industry standard use. Uh, for this, we used the mandrel, and we put a a uh, vacuum plastic around it, and then the layer of our, our our fiber that we're using. Then we put another layer of the vacuum, and we pour the resin and turn the vacuum on to get rid of all the air bubbles. And the, the samples that we receive after that process will be four samples like this. And from there, we are gonna use the aluminum mold that we had to etch out the samples that we needed, and we use the Dremel to cut them to have the samples that we desired. Here is a video of our tensile. Oh, you didn't test. give me permission. But um, oh. it's actually the video which is show how It's just tensile. It's, it's showing that coir has a clean break and that our carbon fiber has uh, residual fibers. That, since it's really strong, there's residual um, materials that stayed intact and didn't completely break. Yeah, you'll see that in our graphs. In the graph, we'll be explaining our graphs in a bit. It'll be our tensile's results. Uh, as you guys see the first look in the below, this is uh, creep due to uh, the, it could be user, user error or uh, the machine error and uh, that means that the, when we were doing our tensile test, uh, it, it's either it wasn't completely tightened, so it's causing that and then two of our samples that we used also break, didn't break in the gauge error which affect its uh, results. Next one, this is for our single layer flax, same thing with the creep, but most of them are in the same gauge area. And this is the single layer carbon fiber, same creep, and then just like I told you guys earlier about the, um, the material is staying intact after the fracture, it has that drop off. This is a double layer flax reinforced with nylon. We only created data, but still has the creep in them and similar with our double layer carbon fiber. And this, this graph uh, shows all five uh, samples that are, are compared to each other. Uh, they're still creep, but as you can tell, that our carbon fiber sam samples are the strongest. That uh, this is around over 100 megapascals, and then it's followed by our flax samples, which is around 63, 62 megapascal, and then uh, our weakest uh, material was our, our coir, which is only 18 megapascals. Uh, to do analysis and all the data we collected, uh, we compared coir to single layer carbon fiber and there's a 88.21% decrease in the tensile strength. And for our flax, there's 59.85% decrease. And then when we compared our carbon fiber with nylon to carbon fiber, there was a, a decrease of 18.39% while comparing the flax with nylon to single layer flax, there was an increase of only 0.13%. And then comparing our two of our uh, biofibers, the flax is 70% uh, stronger than coir. So we did, uh, for our Fletcher test, we did two, uh, we tested them in two different days. And uh, the second day that we came back to the, uh, to the lab, we noticed that the head of the, the machine is um, unscrewed and it became really flexible, which caused some of our data to be skewed. And uh, most of them didn't break since they just flexed. So all our results, we um, 
we stop the deflection into 10 millimeters. And we'll show you in the graphs. Uh, this is the, the samples that we tested after the second day when we find out the uh, machine was messed up. Uh, next, please. Here are single layer flax uh, results that have an average of 32 megapascals. Next. It is our single layer carbon fiber, which goes up to almost 100 megapascals. And this is another one that we tested when we found out that our the machine is broken. Next one. And this is our double layer carbon fiber. And the next one. Uh, this is just comparing all flexor tests for 10 millimeters deflection, saying that the carbon fiber with nylon has the highest strength of almost 200 megapascals, followed by the single layer carbon fiber, which is 100 megapascals. Then followed by the flex with nylon, which goes up to almost 35, and then and then coir. And doing analysis on those, uh, comparing coir to single layer uh, carbon fiber, we found out there's a 76.9% decrease, and for the flax there's 66% decrease. However, when we compared the carbon fiber with nylon to carbon fiber, there was a 97% increase in the flexure stress strength. And for the flax, carbon fiber, uh, nylon with flax, there was a 20% increase, and while comparing our two biofiber, there is a only 32.33% increase. So in conclusion, although we had hoped to uh, introduce natural fiber composite as an alternative from material for prosthetic sockets, the results that we found uh, big to differ. For the performance of the choir were much lower than we had anticipated for. As you can see in our results, the, for both tensile and fluxure, um, it was com when compared to uh, carbon fiber, it was significantly lower. Um, we also found that while trying to, the fabrication method was very difficult, as uh, Ken mentioned and Juan mentioned, uh, injection molding is the standard uh, industry procedure when creating short fiber composite. However, with the limited resources that we have, we attempted to do it by hand. And by doing it by hand, we introduced more varies or variables that could affect the mechanical properties, such as air bubbles, uh, non-thorough mixing, and uh, volume fiber um, ratios. Uh, the performance of flax, although compared to coir, was significantly larger. It's still, when compared to the industry standard of carbon fiber, it still yield very low results. Um, oh, sorry. Um, and then as Juan mentioned, uh, we wanted to introduce nylon into the samples because we're following up on another student's project and they saw significant results and improvement when they introduced nylon to their cotton samples. So we would have hoped that by introducing nylon to our carbon fiber and our flax sample, we would lower the cost of materials when creating the laminating the process. Um, but unfortunately, as you can see from our results, there were not as high as a significant improvement with the nylon. When looking at flax, there was only a 0.13% increase, which you can almost ignore. But however, there was an increase in fluxure, but that could just be because we're adding more layers to the sample, which would cause the fluxure to obviously improve. But carbon fiber, we actually saw a decrease in uh, tensile strength. We're unsure why that could be the case. And with fluxure, again, with the uh, nylon and the flax, it did improve. However, again, that's because we're adding more uh, thickness to the samples. So in our cost analysis, we created a simplified budget comparing the materials cost, the method of manufacturing, and whether or not we believe it's made would be a suitable material to replace the, uh, or to add on to our um, prosthetic socket. Uh, as you, we, from what we found, carbon fiber costs around $140 per kilogram, and that's the, the standard of what prosthetic industry uses today. Um, unfortunately for uh, our results, coir, we do not think would be a suitable material to replace it due to its poor mechanical properties, along with its uh, difficulty in manufacturing with injection molding. Um, however, we do believe that like that uh, flax, especially when the addition of nylon would be a possible material that we could use 
we haven't done a lot of testing. We've only done it with two layers. So if we were able to explore more of that, we could see some possible results. And carbon fiber with nylon, uh, as even though we didn't see that great of um, data difference, we still believe that if we do further research, maybe adding more layers or switching the different method of laminating, we could find different results. And we also created a small or another simplified table of the labor, material, and equipment usage, as you can see in our uh, slide. So as I mentioned, uh, some of the future works that we would look into is expanding to different testing met or methods, such as torsion fatigue, we might also increase our sample size. So the reason we chose five samples is because that's what the minimum was for our uh, ASTM standards. So we decided to use that to reduce the amount of resources we use. We also would want to expand into more materials. As I mentioned before, there is a possibility of natural fiber, especially with flax and nylon, with addition to carbon fiber that could reduce the cost of the material usage. And if we do find significant data, we may even consider trying to create a prototype with these biofiber composites. So I would like to thank our academic advisor, Dr. Richard Chung, for giving us the idea of the project. We also like to thank our industry advisor, Keith Saro, He's also our prosthetics professor for not only supplying or funding us with the project, but also giving his feedback as well. I'd also like to thank Will Sokong. He's the student before us that we're following in his uh, footsteps from his results. I'd also like to thank Patrick and Kyle. Patrick for laminating and creating the sample or for us, and, Pat and Kyle for creating the mold down in the machine shop. And I'd also like to thank a few students, Saeed, Matthew, Justin, Caesar, and Dennis, for helping us throughout the year in our senior project. Thank you, and if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Or here's our references, and then thank you. What? <laughs> why would you use, why would you try to compare anything to carbon fiber when it's considered? The standard? It's the standard used for um, prosthetic sockets. I know it's the standard, but it's almost considered one of the strongest. Yeah. Right. So why would you think? So Dr. Chung mentioned that, um, that especially with as an alternative, as long as it might be strong enough or comparable. But when we talked to Sardo, he said we don't know what strong enough is. That's why that right. date, this data is starting to be um, developed. Uh, but yeah, essentially that's that's it. We that we don't know how much like if there's a 200 pound person, how much how strong does their uh, uh, prosthetic have to withstand? Um, that's why th they wanted to kind of see if if a person that doesn't have enough money to purchase a carbon fiber prosthetic um, could any cheaper material be enough just to it, may, it might not perform the best, but is it enough to um, be suitable for their needs? What kind of nylon do you use? Uh, it was polypropylene. The hanger, hanger supplied it to us. They didn't disclose which nylon it was. They just said this is our nylon that we use. Yeah, because I mean nylon is different, right? It's based on the number of carbon groups, yeah. right? right. Your nylon six six, nylon six, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that there's one where nylon showed an increase in strength mm -hmm. when composited with carbon fiber. You're saying you're doing this, where your nylon is showing a decrease in strength. Yeah, that's why we were a bit uh, confused about it because when we, if we had uh, a little bit, probably if we had less materials to test and more time, we wanted to um, get an SEM image and maybe see like, is and also talk to uh, Sardo which nylon he uses exactly and see like, are they interfacing? Are the materials interfacing a certain way? Or is there a reason why it's slipping like that? Maybe it's the lamination process or, because I don't think they've used nylon in, um, the industry, he told us, like, this no. is just a test, right? Yeah, it's it was because in the previous students, they um, included nylon into right. their yeah. addition, or uh, additive lamination, and they saw improvement there. Yeah. So well, then we wanted to see if that could be 
add it into carbon fiber so we could reduce the amount of carbon fiber used. The farmers didn't add a nylon to what? They added nylon to it's their cotton. Because yeah. yeah. in the previous, they did us very simple. They essentially did the same um, project as us, but with different material. With it's, cotton? Yeah, they did cotton, yeah. bamboo. Will, bamboo. Yeah, okay. Will did a cotton bamboo um, biofiber, and then he had like a single layer of that, and then he also had another. Right, but it's a. Uh, in the natural properties, is, was the nylon stronger than the bamboo? I think the bamboo was stronger. Bamboo was stronger. Oh, when he tested the pure nylon? Yeah, he tested oh, But then okay. he added it with cotton, cotton and then um, bamboo, and then he saw yeah. um, higher results. Oh, yeah, you might have to look at the molecular yeah, structure as well mm -hmm. to figure out what kind of bonding would take place between nylon and carbon fibers and nylon and cotton. Mm -hmm. Because depending on the kind of nylon you're using, uh, if you could form secondary bonds with mm -hmm. whatever is in your composite, that could determine the final properties. Oh, I see. So if the nylon is more geared towards the hydrophobic end, right, um, it can form some van der Waal forces. If it's more geared towards the hydrophilic end, it might mm -hmm. even form some hydrogen bonds and stuff like that, depending on the material. Mm -hmm. So you might need to know that kind of stuff to make uh, speculations. Just any question? Yeah, I was just, why do uh, both bending and tension tests? What's the bending telling you that the tension is not? Uh, we were just thinking that uh, when a uh, yeah. patient and amputee is moving, you kind of have a lot of like movements, like side to side, and we just kind of thought that oh, <coughs> bending would be a good test to see how much it could withstand. Also with the weight, and in tensile, well, we could have done um, compression, but. Tensile compression um, tells the same data essentially. Yeah. Okay, so I, I would ask for, you know, for things like linear elastic materials. You guys know how to calculate bending stress. Mm -hmm. You can compare tensile stress to tensile stress, right? Bending due to tension is bending what? So, are, is there a reason one might tell you something different than the other? Um, I'm not sure, but we also followed in another student's protocol, and they also used tensile and flexure. And like we mentioned before, like it's it's like a database. We want the, the Sardo just wants like the data out there. Yeah, because um, uh, so like, even though it might not be used, at least, at least it's out there. Because how he explained it to us is that um, these companies might have this data behind closed doors, but it's not open. So, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. right, thank you very much. Thank you. Last but not the least. Our bending equations are based off linear elasticity, right? So I'm guessing yeah. the material is not linear elastic, in which it's case not. it's going to perform differently. So yeah. getting bending information can be useful. Um, oh, exactly. if, you, if you know. Yeah. Anyway, just because like you're saying, for different loading conditions, you might get a different kind of modulus. Like a is that the answer you want? Look, just think about it. Thank you. That's some of those kind of things. But yeah, nice work. <laughs> you can, you made it. <laughs> you really did. I think what I need to do is put that up just in case. So, Quinn and uh, Sakolo, I think you guys definitely look at the molecular structure. Yeah, actually, in the, we wanted to use an SEM. Uh, no, 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 not the morphological structure, the molecular structure of what oh, you're talking I'm about. Sorry. Because cotton would have hydroxyl okay. groups that could possibly, depending on the kind of nylon Man. you're using, you could possibly form some hydrogen bonds and make it stronger. Mm -hmm. But you need to know the kind of nylon yeah. you're using. <laughs> and carbon fiber will not do that. No, it wouldn't. But so, flaxseed, maybe that's my conclusion. Maybe flaxseed. So you not need to, carbon fiber because it yeah. would be. Yeah. So if you look at the molecules, you'd be able to tell what kind of molecular interactions they have that are responsible for the microscopic properties. Hey, I can't believe it's okay. <laughs> Please bear with my open.